What is going on everyone? My name is Under the Radar and today I'm bringing you guys the round 7 team builder for the PPL D2. We're 5 and 1. It's 3 o'clock in the morning and this dog is still awake. I don't know why she's been giving me so much trouble lately, but whatever, I don't care. Anyway, this match is extremely important and I will be going over the importance of this match throughout the video. However, um, to people that might look at my record and say, you're 5-1, and one, you're doing awesome, you are in perfect range for promotion. God, Dixie, please. Shh. I'm not. I can still go way the heck down so i need to actually plan and play and prep harder and play better now than i did the first half of the season but this week i am pleased i am playing the amazing chi of the new crustal united very 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 scary team real quick let's actually go over the team he has mega venusaur zapdos empoleon crocodile mesprit regirock which he just traded away which he just traded as romatis for regirock Haxorus, Miss Magius, Delphox, and Vanellux. Now, one thing that I think you'll notice is that he actually has a lot of Pokemon to plan for compared to, say, myself. I only have eight. He has, I think, ten. I think. Hold on. Let me let me actually count. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Yeah, ten. So that's a thing. Um. Real quick, if you look, you notice that he has a Mega Venusaur, Zapdos, and Napoleon Core, which is extremely stupid, bulky, and good. He has two Defoggers and four Rockers. So, Rocks will more than likely be up on my side of the field, so there's really no way of me even trying to get around it. Like, he can carry Rocks on so much that if my Defogger goes down or my Rocker goes down, he can instantly just get him up on my side of the field, and there's really no point in me worrying about Rocks this match. They're going to be there. It's just how it is. I don't want them to be there, and I'm going to try to prevent them as, as long as I can. And I think the easiest way for me to prevent rocks on my side of the field is to get rocks on his side of the field. Because like I said, he only has defoggers. So that means that if I really want my rocks gone, I have to get rocks on his side of the field. So that's something to keep in mind. Another thing to notice is that Zapdos is the number one Pokemon that I'm worst playing against. <sighs> Excuse me real quick. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I just I I had to reply to my girlfriend because, like I said, it's three o'clock in the morning and she she just left my house, so I had to make sure that she got home okay. But it's no big deal. Anyway, like I was saying, Zapdos is the number one Pokemon that I'm worst facing against. I don't fucking know why. I hate facing that thing. It's I don't, there's if we all have that one Pokemon that we are absolutely terrible at facing. We all have that one. By the way, I'm sorry I'm in my robe, but it's three o'clock in the morning. I don't give a shit. Um, we have the one Pokemon that we're really terrible at facing. I know for some people it's Mega Venusaur in draft based leagues. I personally have never had a problem facing it. Uh, but Zapdos is my number one worry. And pairing Zapdos with Mega Venusaur, a Pokemon that can give people problems that that I don't have problems with, I'm worried that it's going to give me problems this match, just because of Zapdos. Another thing to note is that while his walls are good, they're not top tier walls they have weaknesses for example by the way I'm, I'm gonna try to make this a really good team builder i'm not gonna make this a really short shit i don't like doing that shit um for example empoleon does not have reliable recovery and zapdos when it roosts it's weak to earthquake and it also has multiple weaknesses in ice and rocks and things like that so that's something to, to note. Uh, Mesprit, I guess, could be a wall, kind of. Regirock doesn't really have reliable recovery outside of Rest and Drain Punch. And then Miss Magius, I guess, has Pain Split if he wants to run like a like a somewhat specially defensive set. Um, but that's that's really all there is to note about his team. Uh, the the main threats on his team there that scare me the most are Zapdos, uh, Crook, Haxorus, and miss magius to an extent because if it traps something and then destiny bonds it i'm kind of worried about that um overall though i think i can guess the six pokemon that he's bringing i'm kind of sort of expecting the the first three crocodile and then it's the last two that are probably going to be a toss-up between haxorus and delphox haxorus and miss magius haxorus and mesprit like i think haxorus has to be there just because it, it does sweep me once clefable is out of the way but 
Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. Meh. So, with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and go over the team that I'm bringing. Now, the first Pokemon... Actually, this was the last Pokemon that I put on the team. Jesus, Dixie, please stop being a pain in the butt. Thank you. The first thing that I noticed about his team was that I have things that can completely destroy his wall court. Um... But I have to use them properly. I have to not play stupid and not choke. Um, so the last one I actually put on the team was Electivire. The reason why I put Electivire on the team last is mainly for the for the fact that I needed something that could... I don't know how to put this. Just do all-around chip. Because if... If I have this thing in on something and it gets chip damage off, it is then in range to die from something else. By the way, I know in the layout that I have two Pokemon highlighted. I do apologize for that. I just made these a couple minutes ago. I'm tired. Suck a dick. Jesus. So, uh, that's basically what I wanted uh, this Electivire for. I was tossing up the idea between Scarf Jirachi or um, Electivire. I ended up going with Electivire. For the main reason that I wanted something to completely wall Zapdos. While this thing doesn't have any HP or any defense investment, all it needs is the Assault Vest and it can live hits from Zapdos for days. Even Specs Heat Wave, it can live it pretty decently and go for like Ice Punch or threaten it out and make it go into something else that it can hit really hard too. So that's, a, that's the main reason I wanted this thing. The spread... I didn't really know the best way to go with the spread because I wanted something to where... Um, Volt Switch and Psychic would hurt a lot. However, no matter what spread I run, I cannot two hit KO things. I cannot two hit KO. Um, I can two hit KO Empoleon, depending on if he's if he's specially defensive. However, I cannot two hit KO Zapdos if he's if he if he's physically defensive. And with Psychic, I can't two hit KO Mega Venusaur if he's max HP. So really, the EV spread. I wanted enough to outspeed everything aside from Zapdos and Miss Magius and Delphox. Pretty sure that's it. and Haxorus. So I wanted basically to outspeed uh, Bandit Crook. That's mainly what I wanted. And I wanted to be able to, while not punch holes, get really good chip damage for things later on to punch holes through. Um, I'm kind of sort of playing a really weird style this week, but. It is what it is. And actually, if you guys will excuse me, I will be right back. My girlfriend called me, basically, and she just wanted to talk before she went to bed, so I had to go talk to her for a little bit. Um, but as I was saying, this thing isn't really there to punch holes, not there to sweep. It's there to weaken things for later on, because I have really, really interesting plans that's not my play style that he will not see coming. At least I hope. <laughs> With that being said, the next mod on my team is actually going to be Gligar which Gligar there we go um I'll go ahead and let you look at the move set for a little bit longer and then you can figure out what I'm trying to do with this team but basically this thing lives hits it lives everything it sets up agilities it baton passes into Kyurem and Kyurem destroys everything that is the only thing this thing is here for it is here to live hits it's here to live hits from crocodile figure out what kind of set he is if he's scarfed if he's banded or if he's uh bulky with leftovers it is here to hopefully this thing can actually uh do 50 or 50 percent or more to an empoleon if it's specially defensive which is amazing in case you didn't hear me, I said amazing with three A's, two M's, and a Q. Like, it's freaking amazing. Um, the nickname is actually wrong because I had somebody gen it for me, and whenever I sent them the Jenny, I forgot to tell them the nickname. So, this thing will be named Rigby after this week, but this thing can actually do amazing things this week. This thing can live a plus two outrage <laughs> from a Haxorus and get off an Earthquake if he's weak enough. So, if I can... Maybe get a hit off with this and then go into Unwreck with Fable. It'll be a guaranteed Oko with Moonblast. It'll it'll do a lot. However, the main thing I want this thing to do, wait till the end of the game. Make sure that Crocodile is still around. And then whenever I get the chance to, set up an agility. The main things I can set up agilities on are Mega Venusaur, Crocodile, uh, 
Zapdos, kind of, if he doesn't have HP Ice. Um, Regirock. And kind of sort of Haxorus, depending on how many Dragon Dances he has up. If he has up two Dragon Dances, then I can't. And I have to be really careful about going for EQs whenever he's going for Dragon Dances, because if I Baton Pass on his second Dragon Dance, then me Baton Passing into anything is just kind of irrelevant anyway. And yes, I said irrelevant. Um, but this thing is just fat, it lives hits, and it Baton Passes EQs. That's all that it's there for. I already mentioned Clefable, so let's go ahead and talk about Clefable next. Clefable is there to get up my rocks. Uh, I, the bad thing about this is, actually no, hold on, I'm going to go back and talk about Gligar for a minute. Gligar has the worst four move syndrome that I've ever had with any Pokemon in my entire life in this battle. If I could run Roost, Swords Dance, Defog, Stealth Rocks, Agility, Baton Pass, Earthquake, Knockoff, U-Turn, maybe a Rock Coverage type move, Acrobatics would be nice. Um, I, I would seriously consider running about 12 different moves on this thing if I could, but I can't, so I have to play smart and not stupid, but that's basically all I wanted to say about Clegar, but Clefable also has kind of sort of four move syndrome because I want, I want to have stealth rocks. I need to have stealth rocks up on his team to weaken it down so things can kill things. Pretty self-explanatory. Alright, I need unaware Clefable simply because I need to be able to take on Haxorus. If he says if he starts sitting up and he somehow gets up to plus three, like I had one doing a practice match, I need to have this thing around so that way I can send it in. I need it to be at basically full health. If he's gonna be adamant life orb with poison jab, I need to have it basically full health to go for moonblast and kill it. Otherwise, that, that's going to be a little bit of a problem. However, I think he's going to be running Lumberry because I do have a lot of status on my team. I've been known to run Thunder Wave on this thing. I've been known to do a lot with uh, with like Toxic and things of that nature. So I kind of sort of expect him to be running Lumberry with Outrage to cure the confusion if necessary. So that's what I think is going to happen there. Um, Haxorus, I'm really, really scared of, to be honest. But, you know, I just kind of have to not think about it. I kind of have to just play the way you play with uh, setup sweepers is just have your checks safe have your checks healthy don't let anything else wear them down so that's basically all i have to do with that thing but moonblast does a lot of work to his team actually uh it hits crocodile mesprit regirock i've already hit i've already dealt with a regirock with clefable granted it was a completely different set but still clefable can take it on pretty well especially if he's like uh the rock polishing weakness policy set uh, it can't really take on Miss Magius too well. I need to make sure this thing doesn't trap me because with this being my only answer to Haxorus, I really need to keep it around. So that's a pain in the ass, but you know, it is what it is. And Delph Fox, I can kind of sort of take it on. I don't really want to be taking like Choice Specs, Fire Blast or anything like that because they just do way too much. And Venux does get Flash Cannon. So the main threats that I'm really worried about that I can't deal with my Lodic or Crobat. She's still playing with that stupid toy. I can deal with this. So that's really, really nice that I have Clefable to uh, help me out this much in a battle. But the next Mon, I kind of sort of made a last minute change and changed it about 20 minutes before I had uh, somebody gen it for me. And that is going to be Crobat. <sighs> okay, so I really wanted to run an offensive Crobat with Brave Bird just because I could 2 a KO Venusaur. However, when I got to thinking, I was like, you know what? Volturn just does the chip damage that I need. Another thing that this does is that it puts Empoleon directly in range of Earthquake from Gligar. It uh, allows me to U-turn on uh, Crook whenever I see what set it is. So I can go into, say, my QRM or anything like that. I do outspeed. I outspeed everything on his team, 110%. Actually, hold on. I might not outspeed uh, Delphox. I might have accidentally speed crept just Miss Maggie's and not Delphox, which could be a problem. I have to double check that. Um, But... Yeah, I uh, this thing just weakens his walls. 100% weakens them to the point where if I get the agility off, even if they get the, the self-recovery off, the damage that Super Fang does to them is enough for me to do, is enough for me to KO them with Kyurem once I switch it in. So that's really, really nice. And Taunt is perfect. Taunt is perfect for the simple fact that I can stop him from getting up rocks and defogging and <laughs> getting up that Roost or the Synthesis or something like that up or the healing wish hopefully because i think he might actually bring healing wish mesper that could be a thing that he brings do i think he'll like definitely bring it no it's not something that's so crucial that he has to bring it but 
it's it's a very good possibility um and since i'm running super fang and not bravebird i don't need the evs and attack to do a ko which by the way was about 164 jolly so uh, that's 164 evs that i could just slap right into defense and then i'm instantly that much bulkier to take on a uh, crook with crunch or knockoff or to take on a uh, physical mega venusaur because i think he actually might bring a physical mega venusaur or to take on uh Haxorus. I can actually live a Dragon Claw, which is really, really nice, and I can go for a Super Fang, get off good damage, and then that puts him in range for a lot of other things. And uh, I also really want to Super Fang the Regirock. My main goal is to Super Fang all of his walls, Super Fang at least everything once, put it all at half health. The easiest way for me to win is just to Super Fang, not miss, hopefully, <laughs> and just hit everything. So that's, that's Crobat. Crobat's going to do a lot of work. Now, uh, I'm actually going to skip over Curum because since it is what I plan to do the most work with, I'm going to go over that last. I'm going to go over Clefable, uh, to go over Milotic. Milotic is literally there just for Zapdos. I need something that can, that if Zapdos does run crazy, I need something to be like, okay, here, Thunderbolt me now, Bolt Switch me now, bitch. Now I'm going to, I'm going to miracle coat the fuck out of you and you're going to die. That's, that's mainly what this thing is for. Another thing this thing is for is uh, is for Mega Venusaur. If he wants to go for like Giga Drain or something like that, I can just Mirror Coat it and I'll be fine. Because I think, honestly, if I don't reveal Mirror Coat and I reveal Scald, Recover, potentially Toxic, he'll assume I have Ice Beam. I'm hoping I'll go for like Giga Drain or something to hopefully try to hurt me. Or maybe even like Hidden Power or something. But any anything that can make him scared to hit me, that's really, really nice. I'm also running Competitive this week that is something that i have not run yet which i'm hoping he doesn't expect and there's a good reason for it he has two defoggers and an intimidator i'll take the plus two attack uh, special attack boost and i'll just scald everything it's fine by me uh that means that i can guaranteed force him into something like mega venusaur and since i'm going to have the attack boost he's going to want to either toxic stall me or hit me really freaking hard and if he really hits me really freaking hard, then I'm just going to mirror code him. He's going to die. And if he leech seeds me or toxics me, I'm going to switch right out. Like, there, there's not really a problem with him leech seeding me. Toxicing me, that's a different story, but that's fine. I'm also running toxic because I want a toxic Zapdos. I, I have multiple different ways to check Zapdos. That's because I'm so worried about it. I also want to be able to toxic something like Haxorus and hopefully pop its lum before it can actually set up. So, if, like, if I'm in with this thing, he knows I don't have Ice Beam, I only have Scald. I'm hoping I can toxic it, break its lum then be good to go that's really really what i'm hoping actually but this thing is just especially defensive it hits hits decently hard it can burn it can toxic and it's, it's gonna be fun it's gonna be annoying it's gonna be really really fun for him to deal with not really the last mod on this team is in fact curum curum is my win condition i'll say it again curum is my win condition earth okay i'm gonna go down the list psychic to a ko's defensive venusaur ice beam to a ko's specially defensive zapdos earth power kills uh to a ko's specially defensive empoleon ice beam kills crook regirock haxorus um and it's uh to a ko on mesprit ice beam just does so much work it does so much work like i'm like this thing, if I can actually get the agility baton pass off, I win. Especially if it's late game and his team has been worn down. Shit. This thing will do so well. I have enough speed to outspeed everything on his team plus a scarf. That's assuming I didn't I I didn't forget that uh Delphox actually wait, hold on. I really want to see what Delphox's speed is. This is gonna worry me up until the battle. I'm gonna have to get a regen, which kind of sort of sucks give me uno memento to uh i think miss maggie says 105 105 and how much is delphox 104 <laughs> bitch <laughs> i'm so glad my stupidity didn't pay off i forgot to i completely forgot he yeah about delphox having a really high base speed but i outspeed everything plus a scarf which is amazing because that also means that i outspeed a Haxorus at plus one. It's amazing. Um, and I didn't want Life Orb Recoil, so I I slapped on Expert Belt and made it modest, 
with the speed so that way I can outspeed everything instead of timid. So it just because it would be wasteful. I don't need it. And I'm also slapping on Roost. Because there's a couple things on his team that can't touch me whatsoever. Because I have so much uh, HP investment, and this thing is decently bulky to begin with, because, it, you know, it's a legendary and stuff. I can roost up on some cool things. I can roost up on Zapdos if I have to. I can roost up. I can't roost up on Empoleon because of Flash Cannon. But uh, Mega Venusaur, if he's not carrying HP Rock, I can roost up on that. Um, Mesprit. Miss Magius kind of depends on what he has. Uh, Vanellox, I can roost up on that depending on if he has a Rock Polish up with Flash Cannon, you know. But I can roost up on certain things depending on how much health I'm at, if I play smart, if I play stupid, you know, how, you know how, if I basically play Pokemon the way Pokemon should be played competitively. But this thing just does so much work. If I can actually get the agility baton pass into this, <clears throat> it's basically over. But that's basically the whole team. It, <sighs> I'm really, really hoping that this Kyurem set works out. And I'm really hoping that the baton pass, uh, into, um, from Gligar to Kyurem works out really well. Another thing that could kind of scare him is if I'm agilityed up and I stay in with Gligar because he doesn't have a whole lot that wants to take Earthquakes once Zapdos is gone. Unless he has Miss Magius. Which, you know, that's a completely different story, so that's a good thing. However, with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get on out. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you leave a like down below if you did. Also, leave a like as to what you would change on the team. Uh, but... I'm just really excited for this match, man. I'm really excited to use Kiram. Hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic day. I will see you guys in the battle. Bye.